and welcome back! In this lesson we are going to finish the implementation of our tab container component. Let's learn how an Angular component can not only have its own template but also receive template partials as inputs. To implement this let's switch back here to the component class. So one way of implementing that is to create here a component property that we are going to call the header template and this property will be of type template ref and we are going to use the type any. We are going to import this from Angular Core using Alt Enter, so template ref is a reference to a Angular template, such as for example this template that we have here. To better understand how ng template works, let's do a view child query to the tab panel component template. We are going to query by the template ref type. So because in the template we only have one ng template tag, that's the instance that is going to be associated to this variable. So this shows that the variable of type template ref will correspond to an instance of the ng template element. In our current use case, what we want is instead of retrieving this as a view child query, we want to retrieve the template reference as a component input using the input decorator. So let's see how could we use this input property. So here at the level of the application component, if we want, we can define here an alternative ng template. So let's do that. We're going to, using the ng template tag, define here an alternative template. We are going to give it a name. We are going to call it header buttons. So this ng template here will be effectively an alternative look and feel for the tab buttons of our tab panel. And now using these header buttons, we could go here to our tab component and we would take this header template property and we would pass in a reference here to this alternative template. Now the component now receives here as input property this alternative template, so it's just a matter of going here to the tab panel component template and instead of always using the default tabs header template, we are going to test for the existence of this template reference input property. So we're going to add here a ternary expression, we're going to say if the header template is present, then let's use the header template, otherwise let's use the default template instead. So with this in place, we would now have everything needed to provide an alternative template to our component. Let's then try this out and provide an alternative template to the tab button section. So let's say that instead of uh, displaying the tab buttons here as a list of items, let's instead provide an alternative version of this that will simply use here a couple of buttons. So the first button will simply say login and the second button will say sign up. So uh, right now in this example, I'm only taking the first two tabs. So if the first button login button is clicked, then we are going to show here this tab and let's give it a reference. We are going to call it the login tab and this will be the sign up tab. So with these two references in place, we could use these references to implement the tabbing functionality. First, let's hit command S and see that everything is already being used as expected. So now the tab panel is rendering these two buttons instead of the default implementation. And if we remove here the header template and we hit control S, we are going to see that we have the implementation, the default implementation of the tab buttons back. With this in place, let's continue the alternative implementation of the tab buttons. So we would still need to implement here the functionality for selecting a given tab. So for that we are going to detect, for example, a click here at the level of this button and whenever the button gets clicked, we want to call the select tab method. So we can try it like this, select tab, and we are going to pass in as reference the login tab. And this situation brings us to a fundamental concept about the use of templates and content projection as well. The problem is this would not work because everything that is inside here, this ng template, any references that we have here to a function would not be resolved against the tab panel component where this is being used. This would be resolved 
against the application component but the problem is that the application component does not have a select tab function so we would run into an error so in order to fix that problem we have added here a tab panel reference to the tab panel component so this is the whole component and we are going to use it to uh, access this function the select tab function so using it we can implement here the tab selection functionality so here the sign up button we are going to link it to the sign up tab let's try this out if we refresh the application we are going to see that if we click sign up now the sign up form is being shown if we click login we are back to the login form and again if we remove this alternative implementation we have the default look and feel back working again so here we have it this is the final version of our tab container component let's now add some test specifications to it before we move on to our next component we are going to again increase the level of difficulty a little bit we are going to introduce structural directives it will be a modal component but first let's write the tests for the tab container component we are going to see how can we test the switch tab functionality for example let's have a look at it this is coming right up in the next lesson